Yes, I say we'll take a deeper dive into the 1999 poem Eurydice by Carol and Duffy. There's some context about the poem. It is based on the myth of Orpheus. It follows the most talented musician named Orpheus, who is marrying his wife, or is marrying his fiance named Eurydice. Unfortunately, on the day of their wedding, Eurydice is bitten by a snake and killed. Orpheus is distraught and decides to leave the the underworld to save his beautiful and perfect wife. Um, when he reached the gates of the underworld, he started playing his music and made it all the way to the feet of Hades and Persephone. The, his music moved them so much that they agreed to return Eurydice on one condition. This condition stated that when he was leaving the underworld, he was not to turn around to look at Eurydice and just to check if she was following him. Uh, just before exiting the underworld, he gave in to temptation and looked back, and Eurydice was in the was trapped in the underworld forever. This poem focuses on Eurydice, like Eurydice's poem, focuses on her perspective and how she did not want to be saved, and willed him to turn around. At first glance. The poem shows that Eurydice does not want to return to the overworld with Orpheus, that marriage can feel like a burden, and that she just wanted to be free. The poem is told from the perspective of Eurydice, and Duffy shows the audience that she did not want to return to the overworld with him using multiple literary devices. Uh, these literary devices include rhyme, hyperbole, and diction. Throughout the poem, Duff uses these literary devices to show Eurydice wants to be free of the burden of life, marriage, and others' egos. Duff uses rhyme to show Eurydice that Eurydice wants to be free of Orpheus and the burden of marriage throughout the entire poem. An example of this is when she says the quote that is on the screen. Uh, she puts the literary devices that, in uh, an order so that they rhymed with each other. The effect of this was to make Eurydice have a mocking and sneering tone towards Orpheus and make fun of him. She does this because there are like the things that are being named are only the things he knows how to do regarding his trade as a singer and poet, and has nothing to do with true love. She also says traps in these literary devices, implying she's being held down by Orpheus's image and trade, not being able to write her own story and legacy. Duffy uses hyperboles to show you how Eurydice wants to be free to free of the burden of others' egos very well. An example of this is when she's uh, she says a quote being presented. When she refers to the different animals flocking to him and the mute sullen stone that his feet weeping, and she's trying to say that his ego is inflated. This is especially emphasized when she says, for man verse wise. Bigo was the boy. Legendary. The men she refers to are the other male figures and poets that think of him as a boy, literally. This is because they think he has an inflated ego, he is self-important, and he's blind to others' feelings and beliefs. Also, the word blurb often refers to a brief description of books in order to sell them and promote them. This means that all of his verses and poems are not real, but they just need to be sold to everybody. Therefore, Eurydice wants to be free of this inflated ego that Orpheus has. Diction is a major factor in showing that the motif of freedom throughout this poem. An example of this is when Eurydice says the quote on the screen. Uh, diction is used at the beginning of the quote uh, as it's, uh, because it's like the words are similar to everyday conversation. She then uses many words to describe her current state, which is dead. This emphasizes the fact that she does, she wasn't meant to live any longer and doesn't want to be with him anymore. At the end of the quote, her tone goes from beautiful and artsy to serious when she says, please let me stay. It's blunt, short, and stay, and out of the blue and it gets the point across. She wants to stay in the underworld. In conclusion, Duffy uses several literary devices to emphasize how a young bride wants to be free of the burden of her husband and her life in general, and marriage.